Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. The Expendables 2 movie thoughts. Now, since the first one got some of the 80s action cliches out of the way, and I'm not going to be giving away which ones those were, I like that this one goes for the revenge story, so that we can get on that one. Before I get too much into that, however, I should talk about who gets the screen time in this movie, as I promised in the review video. Statham and Stallone are still the main focus, with Maggie, I don't know the actress's name, please don't kill me for it, I'm talking to the actress, kind of, yeah, also getting a bit of the screen time. Hemsworth is just barely in it. And speaking of barely in it, in order of who appears the least to who appears the most, Norris, I guess Arnie, and then Willis. And on the Yes, and speaking of who appears very little, Lee is also just barely in this movie. And I suppose that pretty well covers it. Anyway, revenge flick. The... It, it really works, I felt, that you have this... The, the exchange the prisoner for the, or the prisoner, the, the, yeah, his life for the contents of the box. And Stallone decides to order them to throw down their arms. And he, you know, the, the, I love the over-the-top way of killing him. It's it's like a what was one of those machines? Ah, crap. Yeah. Any, anyway, it's it's more detailed than it really needs to be. He has the Scott Adkins hold up the knife in front of the chest, and he does the karate kick. The the iconic, they, they had him do a lot of those nice iconic kicks for, for how relatively little Van Damme actually fights in this. He does a lot of those spinning kicks. That's, that's nice. And Stallone, at the end of it, you know, it, you, you have the, the face-off between Stallone and Van Damme. Which, in itself, is also something that should have happened ages ago. And I, I really liked how it went down, because it really was the martial artist versus the sort of more brawny guy. And, and he actually used his boxing, you know. It was pretty cool. And... Yeah, anyway, so yeah, you have the face-off, and Van Damme still got the knife, because he stole it, you know, there at the beginning. And... It's, it's like, I used your knife to kill your apprentice, and I still have the knife, come and get it from me, and use it to kill me and get revenge. And... He gets you know, the knife, 
stabs him. His name was Billy. Twists the blade and stabs him the rest of the way. That was really cool. And I, I love how he shows off. He, he has to contort his neck to kind of show off the tattoo. And it's, it's clearly just so that they can recognize the tattoo on the neck of that other guy later on. But I, I love how he it makes an effort to show it. To, to make sure that they have something to go on. You know, but by the way, my gang is called this, and, you know, our old hideout was over here. You could probably find some leads on where we are there. They don't even, like, bother trying to kill them. It's not even, like, a, any kind of thing where they, they break out of a trap, or there, there was something that was supposed to kill them, but somehow didn't. Something. No, nope, he just leaves them behind, and it's like, okay, well, don't try to stop me, I guess, even though I just gave you plenty of reason to. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> anyway, and, uh, you know, it, also, what, what could be a more epic showdown? You know, the, the, the goat versus the human skull. That is a... You know, a, a throwdown of symbols for the ages. And I love that Stallone advertised his friggin... What is it called? Mont Grato pen or something. Do, do a search on, like, Obscures Lupa did a dramatic reading of the the description of the, the that pen, and it's pretty frickin' hilarious. Anyway, the... Is it just me, or that first time you see Stallone, and he's got the beard, and he's got these goggles, He's, he's driving the tank. Is it just me or does he look like Wiley Coyote wearing goggles? It, it, it might just be me. It's just, he, he looked supremely silly is, is what I'm really getting at here. I wish that Lee was in more of this film. I know, I can't believe I said it either. But I do really like that he got to kick a certain amount of ass in that opening, and, you know, break out some pots and pans, excuse me, and like the first film, excuse me, one of the, excuse me, one of the rare occasions where he does not use wire work. Actually, I think Stallone has, you know, wrung his neck if he even tried to set up a wire. Like, he had to keep hiding it every time Stallone came to set. Because it, it, these movies are kind of him saying, there's still room for the this kind of old school action. It doesn't all have to be wire work and kids with superpowers, you know. I love how over-the-top evil Villon is, you know, and, and Scott Adkins, the henchman, the, the thing. He, he is tired! Oh? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess he wasn't doing work anyway, and, and Villain is like, we, we have to dig faster. But we already got most of the men. Then get the rest of the men! And get the women and the children, too! Wow! That just is... Yeah, I, I guess you couldn't really get much more evil than that. And the... And, and that actually kind of explains where the... The, the, the next group of them come from when they actually get back. I guess it was really lucky timing though. I mean, did the women actually know they're going to 
attack, they're, they're going to come for some more of us in, you know, so and so many hours or minutes or something. I, I didn't quite get, I mean, well, there is this plutonium that they're digging up, but then again, there is this little village that might at some point in the future be attacked by the same people we're already trying to stop. Well, yeah, I guess we should just stay and protect the village. I <laughs> think that really is a no-brainer. Wow. I think you maybe should have left the ring a little bit earlier, Stallone. Just, just... Don't think your... head is quite... Yeah, your, your heart's in the right place, but... Yeah. I liked Billy the Kid's background and this whole story, you know, it was kind of silly. I can't really see the U.S. holding off on a, an, an airstrike today for fear of collateral damage. I think maybe the, I don't know, I, th I think it was still Sly who wrote this, I think maybe his <laughs> right-wing views. Peace be with that. I, that's, I have no problem with a, a right-winger writing a Hollywood movie, not at all. I just think he, he, it, should, it should maybe catch up with the actual reality of today. I, I don't know, maybe it is supposed to be in line with this 80s thing. I don't know. Anyway, I did quite get into that. You know, his explaining his background and talking about the, you know, the, the, the girlfriend in France and the whole thing. Man, was it telegraphed that he was going to die. I mean, they could not have made more effort. He, he practically showed, uh, you know, a, a photograph of his girlfriend. You know, he's like, oh, I'm, I'm leaving the force, yeah, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm retiring. And... I'm just going to settle down with my girlfriend and we're going to live and we're going to just, it's going to be awesome and man, no one but him was going to do, uh, yeah. Well, and, and when Sly is like standing there at the funeral, which I genuinely thought was a nice, I liked that the movie actually said, you know what, we're going to spend some time on this kid. This is, this is a big deal. And... Yes, Sly is standing there at the funeral. How come the kid who, of, of all of us, least deserved to die, and, you know, most wanted to live, died? And I'm just like, Sly, you wrote the script. You tell us. Yeah. I wasn't entirely clear on how exactly they knew where the... The, the plutonium was going, I don't know, I guess, I guess it's because it's an airport and they were going to get into that and the, like they needed the airport to, I don't know, maybe it was a line that I missed. I, that is, that is genuinely possible. I feel like Terry Crews kind of lost a little bit of his identity in this one. I mean, the, the kind of the defining aspect to him is this big automatic shotgun, and in this, Arnie takes it from him. I did like that line, though. My big gun is hanging, is, is going to keep hanging right where, where, where it is. That's pretty funny. That, and, and the, the sort of continued flirting, bit of flirting, gunner pathetically trying to get with Maggie is pretty funny. The, the clearing his throat and coughing on the plane. And finally, she looks up and he's like, ah, ah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. And then they have him talk about how Swedes eat seal, baby seals and whale ass. You know, at some point, I really think Stallone should 
move outside of the United States, if only for a few seconds. Just, just to see how, how close to reality some of these ideas are. Let's see, what else is there? I really like that they sacrificed the plane. I felt like we had kind of gotten used to it over the course of the first film in this one. I'm, that, that's not a negative, it's just they spend a, a good amount of time on it. We get used to it, so it's nice to mix it up and say, you know what, we're going to smash it. And frankly, if they do make a third one, I would like to see them have a new vessel of some sort. I don't know exactly what it's going to be, though, because I guess a, a, a plane like that does make a lot of sense. I don't know, maybe a boat or something. Just, it, I, I like that they did excuse me, that they did say we're going to smash it. Again, too bad that the trailers gave it away. I love how in this, these action icons basically just save the expendables and then they're like, okay, well, bye. I hope you weren't expecting me to be in the rest of this movie. It's like, okay, Sly, paycheck, thank you, goodbye. That, wow. And it, it literally, I mean, they, they could pretty much just have them not, I mean, <laughs> Norris, and Arnie did not need to be in this movie. You, you could argue that Willis kind of did, although he didn't need to show up at the end and kick ass. I'm not saying that it was bad that the three of them, you know, ran it and kicked ass, but really, if they hadn't been, we just wouldn't have had these awkward, they show up for just a little bit. I did like that they have Norris actually say, a Chuck Norris fact, you know, one, one of those jokes about how, how awesome Chuck Norris is, that was, yeah, I like some, some of these nice little, little touches, I like seeing Terry Crews, like, he's, he's standing there enjoying his morning coffee, he walks out, of the, and, and then he just sees these, these you know, soldiers, and he just walks back in, up, the, we got problems, duck, and yeah, and the, the sort of camaraderie, they really feel like a unit in this, with, I, I love the moments like Stallone as the, you know, he is the commanding officer, kind of, I don't know, I guess they don't really have rank in this, in, in their unit, but yeah, he's like saying, you know, well, lights out, fellas, and Cruz is like, I haven't finished eating, and he just, you know, puts it, up. yeah, that's that pretty good. I suppose that more or less covers it. I, I also enjoy these little exchanges where they implement they, they yeah implement these iconic phrases of the of, of these action icons with Arnie goes I'll be back and then Willis is like you've been back a lot lately big guy I love it. just you stay here I'll be back and Arnie is like, you be Kanye, mother. Yeah, that was, that was pretty good. I feel like they need to come up with some new material about Couture or just dump him entirely. I barely even noticed him in this film. Does he even have a trademark? I would love to find out what it is. Statham's got the knives, Stallone's got the. Wild West six-shooter thing going on. T 
Terry Crews got the big, yeah, I went all ebonic on you, yeah. The, the automatic shotgun there, which Arnie steals. Gunner is in the film, well, he's the comic relief, I guess, which somewhat makes us notice him. I don't know what Couture does. Really, that that he needs to be there for, or that he, yeah, I, I don't even know that was. Is he one of the wrestlers? I don't really pay attention. If they didn't, if they weren't in an action movie, I don't know about them. Sorry, and I don't really care to either. Anyway, if if they don't come up with jokes about stuff, uh, other stuff about him than his ear and or his hearing. Then why is he there? If if they're not gonna give him stuff to do that makes him stand out, and they're not gonna make new jokes about him, yeah, it kind of you know. And Statham again is pretty much the best part of the movie of of the the good guy characters anyway. Excuse me. I mean, Stallone's awesome, of course, but Statham's the funniest. And, and his knife thing, and the man and knife thing. I, I really like, I mean, for, for my complaining about the logic of, the, of, of them being there when the village is attacked, I really do like that scene. It is one of the few examples of the, the, these action stars being in different places and thus having stuff to do. There, there isn't just, you know, they're, they're not just in a, in a formation and shooting in all directions or like driving different cars. I mean, say in the, what were like three tanks, they drove like three vehicles in that first action scene. Couldn't that action scene pretty much have been accomplished with them only driving one. Actually, I guess Lee is at least by himself at one point, but I think the others pretty much kept to a unit. By the way, why did Stallone bring his motorcycle there other than launching it into a helicopter? I mean, it worked, but it just seems like he... Did he bring it for any other reason? I mean, when the helicopter arrives, they're like, oh, what are we gonna do? And then he just launches it into it. it, it I mean, it's not like they just say, okay, Barney, go ahead and... I can't believe he's actually named Barney. Well, I guess no one would dare make fun of him. The... But, but yeah, the, the attack on the village with them being in different positions and they all feel important because this is not just the senseless killing that is so typical to the 80s action flick and the tributes there too. It is actually necessary, I mean, if, if they're not there to kill these guys, the, the these villagers are going to be forced into this labor also, you know. So so it really feels like they're making an important difference. And I, I really like also that you have this hostage or yeah, yeah, hostage rescue where they rescue all these guys. Although the the, the place is blown up like right after you know, when, after Villan has gotten all the plutonium and is driving away, he's got these guys standing, aiming guns at the workers, and he drives away and blows up the place. Did he know that they were already dead, or was he just going to sacrifice his own men? I mean, yeah, that... I mean, it, the, the Union's going to bust his ass over that one, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, the it it felt like they they really had a reason to be there, like they were important. And in comes Arnie, yes, I'm back, and yeah, it's I I wouldn't really have minded if 
Gunner's explosive had worked, though. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't remember that much of the first one, of, of sort of j just the overall impression. But didn't he... Was, was he useful in that movie? Is that why they're making so much fun of him here? I don't know, if they make a third one and he wasn't useful in the first one, I hope that they do make him useful in the third one. Or that they maybe drop him entirely. And they, I, I do like that this one actually brings in the last few of the... Well, I guess just two more than the, the first one did of these action heroes. But this one does actually put guns in the hands of the two that... Yeah, Arnie and Willis. So, that's really good. And... Yeah, you know, you have this... Yeah, it, it basically is this massive collection of these action heroes. I, I guess pretty much just left with... Snipes, if he is ever allowed near a Hollywood production again after the last one. And Seagal. Maybe he could roll his way onto the into the shot. I suppose that pretty well covers it. Yes. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.